Hey, everybody, and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Chef AJ, and my guests tonight are Rich Roll and Julie Piat. They're authors of the new book, The Plant Power Way, Whole Food, Plant-Based Recipes, and Guidance for the Whole Family. Their new book is a transformative family lifestyle guide on the power of plant-based eating with 120 recipes from world-renowned plant-based ultra-distance athlete Rich Roll and his chef wife, Julie Piat. So please welcome Rich and Julie. Thanks for having us, AJ. Well, my pleasure. I just want to say that this is a beautiful book. And what I mean by that, I don't mean just the recipes, and I don't mean just the photos. This is like a peek into your family. It made me want to come over. <laughs> I mean, your pool. We can arrange that. Well, I mean, if this is really your house and your pool, I mean, and the, the photographs are just beautiful. They're just so inviting, and it just makes – you want to eat this way because, I mean, you guys, let's face it, you guys are beautiful people. You have beautiful children, but I just love the photographs and I love the black Thank and white. You. And it's just, just, it's just a beautiful book. And I've made two of the recipes so far and I'd love to talk about the recipes. But even before that, what really intrigued me is that this is a guide for the whole family. And you guys have four kids. And what our listeners need to know is how you do it because not everybody was born vegan, as I'm sure you weren't in, in none of your kids' were but yet you've been able to transition them and that's what everybody wants to know how did you guys do it so feel free to, to tell a little bit about your story first how you each transitioned yourself because this is what people want to know how do we feed our kids okay so julie you want to you want to jump in on wanna that take one that first? one Go okay ahead. yeah well the kids is you know we always say um, rich and i say you know uh, that this journey into wellness is an evolution revolution and it's a process <laughs> So it's always moving and changing. Um, it's never static. And another element is that within families and within communities, there are very, very many different types of in individuals. And then individuals are also experiencing different things at different stages of their lives. So we like to adopt an attitude of loving um, compassion and unconditional love for everyone, wherever they are in their journey. Um, and oh, we can you hear me? Yeah, no, I can hear. I was just okay. saying, okay, I could sure use some more of that unconditional love and compassion. You know, I've been vegan for almost 40 years, and I be honest, I don't always have the compassion for people that are eating animals. So good for you for having that be your, you know, your primary focus. I, I really. Well, I understand. I mean, I'm with you on that. You know, I'm, I, I, uh, you know, I'm with you. Uh, however, I, I know um, that the way to um, to really affect change is by being uh, like a living example. Right. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, let's face it, we're all not perfect and we all have issues that we could improve upon and awareness that we could improve upon. And um, I know the power of unconditional love um, while someone is going through a process. So, you know, we did extend this to our kids. And when we started this whole thing out, you know, Rich writes that, you know, you could, sort of delineate down the refrigerator what foods he was eating and what foods I was eating. This was pre, <laughs> pre Rich's transformation when he was eating, you know, the window diet where you could, you know, fast food and burgers and this kind of stuff. <laughs> I was eating healthy um, sort of a yogic lifestyle and very clean vegetarian. Um, and then our kids were kind of mixed. So our little girls have never eaten meat and our older boys, one was a vegetarian and one was eating what he thought at the time was clean, clean meat. But through our transformation um, and getting into um, really preparing foods that would support Rich in his racing and doing these incredible double Ironman races um, uh, on a plant-based diet, um, really out of love for him, I delved into that and uh, developed uh, – really creative recipes and they became a part of our family and slowly over time everybody came on board because of the way they felt and how amazing the, the vibration and the energy and everything was mm. and delicious i might add thank you delicious yes. i can tell you that i mean just to jump in on this a little bit aj i mean it really you know it really is, you know, Finding Ultra was my story. It was a, you know, it was really a memoir of like my transformation. But at the core of that, it, you know, was Julie's strength that allowed me to kind of step into being a different person. But in the wake of that book, you know, that book didn't contain recipes. So the next question is, well, all right, I get it. I'm in, I'm sold on the plant-based lifestyle. So now you got to tell me what to eat. And, and really, um, you know, 
the plant power way is the family story. You know, it picks up off of where my story left off. And like, this is the story of how all of us have kind of stepped into this lifestyle together. And, you know, whether you're a vegan or you're paleo, no matter what your diet is, everybody kind of aspires to greater health. And everybody wants to instill in their children healthier eating habits. And I think we get this question a lot, like, how can I get my kids off the mac and cheese? Like, what am I going to do? And so we really wanted to write a book that was not just, uh, you know, a plant-based vegan cookbook, but also, you know, it's equal, it's just as much a how-to book as it is a cookbook. It has all this kind of guidance and resources and tools and opinion pieces about, um, you know, how to sort of step into this transition, uh, you know, as gracefully as possible. And how do you, you know, create these habits for your kids and how can you make healthier choices when you're traveling and all the kind of questions that, that I'm sure you get, AJ, all the sure. time and are constantly fielding, and, of course, we do as well. Well, and I bet just, you know, being being the kind of athlete you are, I'm sure you get it a lot, especially from guys. Like, you know, they can't believe that you can sustain yourself on plants. Right. I mean, it's always, you know, it's always that question. Like, they, yeah, that's, that's always the first question. Yeah. And then <laughs> followed up with that is, this idea that Julie must be making multiple meals. She must be making one meal for me and a different meal for the little girls. And, and, you know, we're, we're huge proponents of not having a kid's table. Like what we eat is what our kids eat. And, you know, Julie and I are doing a million things. And the last thing Julie's going to do is spend, you know, three hours in the kitchen preparing, you know, the evening meal. Like it has to be, easy it has to be facile it has to be delicious and they have to be dishes and meals that are going to satisfy me as the athlete in the family but also the finicky palates of younger kids and so all of this has evolved of course over the last eight years and so what's in the book isn't what we started out with this has gone through you know a constant as julie puts it evolution revolution to get to this point <laughs> mm-hmm. But but it's really it is for the family. And I think, you know, what we're trying to put out there is, is this idea that that being vegan, uh, you know, being plant based, being vegan is no longer, you know, the purview of the marginalized hippie. Like this is a modern, cool thing to be like. It's rad. To be it is. It's it cool. Is. <laughs> and it's fun. And you can do it, too. And look at how much fun we're having. And we all look healthy. And come on, you guys, like the water's warm over here. You know, no, I mean, you guys color. look, I mean, all of you look absolutely, it's just really, it's like, it's like, I don't want to say Norman Rockwell, but maybe the vegan version. You guys just, I mean, what a, <laughs> what a, what a, what a great looking family. Um, and I also do love the simplicity of your recipes. I made two of them and I love that I could make them in the Vitamix, which I love things you can just throw in. So I made the tahini green sauce and that was delicious. Mm-hmm. On cool. vegetables. And I love the black bean soup because even though I have a great black bean soup recipe, it takes like 30 minutes to cook. Yours took less than five minutes because it was made in <laughs> the So, so, so the yeah, rest, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're easy. Hey, they and so cool to hear. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. I really did. So, but let, let's tell our listeners this didn't happen overnight. I mean, these four kids didn't become plant based overnight, right? No, 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 they did not. And, it, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a process. So, What I did is I just, um, it started as an exploration to feed Rich, um, you know, because he was training insane amount of hours um, and, you know, distances to, you know, be ready for his races. But I mean, what we did is, is um, we just started sort of to really get in the kitchen and make the kitchen a really focal point of our home. And so, you know, I would just continually try more varieties, more varieties, more varieties. And it's not that our kids never, never turned their nose up or said, I don't like that, or I don't like kale, or I don't like <laughs> chart or whatever. Sure. They said it a lot. I just didn't really give it a lot of, a lot of airtime. I, I didn't push back against it and I didn't go, Oh, well then let me get you a hot dog on a stick. Right. I just kind of listened and I was like, yeah, okay, well, I get it. Well, you know, there's a, there's a bowl of apples over there or, you know, there's, I, I try to make a good variety. So there's enough choices that at least maybe there's one thing that they'll eat. And then I just don't really worry about it. I'm not going to go give them pizza or bad food because they haven't eaten. You know, right. I kind of figure like when they get hungry, they'll, they'll, they'll eat. And, you know, it's, 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 it makes me laugh out loud because our, I call her our, our vocal protester is, uh, is our Mathis, who's 11 years old now. And, you know, she's, she hasn't always been down with everything that we've prepared. And, but it's funny because the microbes start 
start taking over. And like about six months ago, I did a double take when I saw her go into the kitchen and saute up some chard and like go to her room with a plate of chard. And I almost like, I almost fell down. And then just, I, um, I was doing, we have this amazing bonus recipe um, bundle. It's 10 recipes that I'm super excited about. Um, that I created just in the last couple months. And one of those is an amazing cherry cacao chocolate cake that is mm. um, on my album cover. It's like it's the front of my album. And you you get that cake recipe and also a free download of my album, which is really cool. Now, how, um, how do but I make, make, yeah. How do, how do yeah. they get this, Julie? How would they get these recipes? Uh, when, they, when they pre-order, uh, you have uh-huh. to pre-order the book. So through ritual.com and then you click through Amazon or wherever you want to buy it and then enter your receipt and we'll email you all these free gifts. There's like $300,000 worth of prizes actually that we can wow. talk about. Yeah. I, I, saw, so, I saw that because I'm on your mailing list and my husband said, is that, is that like a typo? 300? That's, that's a lot. Of, of course. Yeah, we have, post, tons so of, uh, we have tons of partners, uh, you know, companies that have aligned with us who've been extremely gracious and allowing us to give away a lot of their product for free. So, yeah, so you go to ritual.com and you can, like, check out all the bonuses. And if yeah. you pre-order the book, we'll send you a bunch of cool stuff. That's amazing. That must have been a very proud moment as a parent to see your daughter, like, cook her own greens. I mean, that I just can't imagine. must have been – Well. It it is, and then this crazy stuff happens because you know, I mean, all kids like sugar, right? So, sure. so I I made the chocolate cake, and I made it with the frosting because I needed to stand up in the in the photo, you know. And then both of my daughters said to me, "Mom, the cake was amazing. The frosting was too sweet." They said, "Interesting." Too too sweet to me. Again, I almost dropped the plate. In because the palates like, change. You know, it, then, yes. and I, I love, yeah. that, Julie, I, and I love that you don't make them pizza or give them pizza if they don't like what you're serving because, you know, there's a bunch of uh, plant-based pediatricians in Los Angeles and I've heard them speak and they say that, you know, you don't, if a kid won't, a kid is not going to starve themselves to death and they'll eat when they're hungry as long as you have healthy choices and that don't even make them cereal. It's, it, you know, it's either eat what we served or you can always have some fruit. That's what I've heard from the experts to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, it's true. And, and, and I also allow them their own exploration. Like, let's say like we, we know that gluten isn't good for, for us, we, mm-hmm. our family, we, we're there. We know that. So, you know, my daughter sometimes will go out somewhere. We'll be at a party and she's like, I want a bagel. Like I really want it. I really want it. <laughs> and so we'll have this moment and I'll just go, okay, well, if you want to have that experience, it's your decision. So you go ahead and do it. And then she'll do it and she'll have a stomach ache and then we'll talk about it. And we'll go, okay, well, let's retrace what happened. I'm like, yeah, okay. So this is your experience that you've chosen. That's great. But then the next time she does it, I say, okay, you remember what happened. So if you choose it, you can't come to me to make you feel better. You're yeah. on your own. Maybe next time you could just like videotape it. And then you, if she tries <laughs> that again, you could just show her the clip, yeah. you know? Show her the thing, right. That's what so, I'm but, but then what happens is then she, what happens is the children become self-regulating. It's their choice. She's making the choice. So my experience with her this morning was at the, at the Vitamix, I had, you know, started to make a blend and I had some fruit blended in and she said to me, mommy, could you please put uh, some aloe vera filet and some spirulina in my blend this morning? And I said, I would, I would gladly do that for you, my dear. Let me do that for you. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, And, you know, And, and the point is, is she's not unique. What what I'm what I want to make the point is that all of us are the same, and once you start getting more plants and whole foods into your diet, your body will start to shift. Mm. So I'm looking at these beautiful pictures, and there appears to be a dog, maybe a golden retriever, possibly, or a yellow lab. Yeah. Is, is that a, is that a, a family member as well? He is, and and he um, is. we we say well, goodbye to Bodie. Um, he passed away actually after the shoot. Some oh. months. Um, oh, this, his I'm name, sorry. He, but he photo bombed almost yeah. every photo. <laughs> I, I was just wondering if he if he ate healthy too, or if it was a family affair with the whole family. Was it was the was the well, doc? You know, I actually tried AJ. I did try some of that, and I didn't. Um, I can't say that I was successful in it. Um, and I'm I'm hoping that more companies are coming out with more formulations, but. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, I didn't get to really go all the way with him in that way. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I mean, I could never get my dog to do it either. But uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Tanai Suzuki, the wife of Chef Eric LeChasseur. She's coming out with a book called Happy Pooch, where she's going to teach us how to make our own pet food. So that's that could that's be great. Wow. I love that. Well, you know, your forward, you, you had a, you know, this guy, a real slouch, Sanjay Gupta. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh-huh. Of course. Very impressive. The forward written by 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 Sanjay Gupta, MD. I thought that was pretty cool. Also, you know, he's so. very uh, he's very plant friendly, very plant curious. You know, That's we're working great. on him. I, I think, know. I think we're going to bring him over to into the light. I was going to say, wouldn't it be great to get him on our team? You know, I really, I really love uh, also what you do, Rich, because I really think that this thing, when guys like you, I mean, this is what it's going to take is guys like you and Derek Treeside, because, you know, I mean, us women, we've been smart for a long time and we've known this <laughs> is a way to, to eat mm-hmm. and live, but, you know, it's not manly. But when they see guys doing it and getting the kind of results you are, I think that's really like has been the missing piece for a long time. You know? Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, I think certainly, you know, athletes have their place in this discussion, and it's so great to see more and more athletes stepping up, experimenting, experiencing great results with it. Um, and it's true, and it's kind of unfortunate, though, that, like, you know, guys, they need to see that. You know, they need to see the example. They need to see, you know, the representation of masculinity and performance in order to wrap their heads around it. Cause you're right. The women are smart. They don't need yeah. that, but the guys yeah. were a little bit dense, you know, right. so we need that. Um, but uh, I think all voices are important. You know, I think sure. that everybody has their own unique voice and, and, and they all need to be heard in this movement. Mm-hmm. So whether you are, um, you know, a radical animal rights activist, or you're somebody who's kind of going more up the middle or, you know, whoever you are, there's an audience for that voice and there's an appropriate, you know, time and place for that voice to be heard. And, and what we're seeing is, which is so exciting is this movement really ha- has so much steam right now. It's picked up so much energy and it really is, you know, this mainstream thing right now. And pretty soon it's just, it has its own, you know, sort of momentum and gestalt and energy that only seems to me from my perspective to be growing and growing and growing at an exponential rate. I know it's so cool and it's just so encouraging that 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 we are gaining some traction. I think Forks Over Knives had a lot to do with it. I really do. I just think that sometimes if a movie comes out, it really gets people, you know, curiosity peaks in wanting to find out more. Yeah, there's no question about it. Yeah, and then of course, you know, books like yours and and like you say, everybody, I, I, everybody's work is important. So four kids, what are their ages and when did you start their transition? Well, see, their age for, uh, tw- our oldest son is now 20, so 20, 18, 11, and 7. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and again, um, my middle one, the 18-year-old, was always naturally vegetarian. You know, he was one of, those, one of those very sensitive who just knew that that wasn't what he wanted to do, like from the time he was a baby. I'm looking at his um, picture. He's wearing a T-shirt that says, Kale, I love him already. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then my other son, uh, you know, he was, pr- he was, uh, he was eating, you know, what people would think was clean meat, like fish and uh, maybe some turkey or something like that at the time. But actually now this, um, our oldest son is, is a, is a practicing yogi. Actually I practice yoga with all of my, with all my kids, but um, he, uh, he actually is medita- a meditator and extremely, extremely um, on the vegan uh, lifestyle. And he actually is even, you know, he's sort of like the, the, the ultimate conscious in the house, you know, as to if something's sustainable, if it's good for the planet, is it good for the animals? So um, they, their transition, I guess, happened, you know, after Rich's transition. I would say, you know, our girls have never eaten meat, um, you know, except maybe once by accident, you know, uh, and they spit it out quickly. Um, so they don't even know. You know, I realized when I, when I formulated my untuna recipe and I was talking about how great this was, and then my little girl said to me, Mom, what's tuna? Mm. And I said, that's a fish. And she said, gross. Why would you eat a fish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they think that if, if kids really knew what they were eating, they, they wouldn't be eating it for the most part. They wouldn't be eating it. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, but I think that one of the catalysts for me, which was really beautiful is, you know, I, again, I was, uh, I healed myself of a cyst in my neck through Ayurveda and a plant-based diet and like 2005. 
And so I was eating a very, you know, a very conscious yogi diet um, that included some ghee and some milk. But when Rich went complete vegan and, you know, was performing at these amazing levels. And, uh, and so I, I decided to go vegan really um, by his example. So Rich really uh-huh. was the catalyst that we all actually went all the way vegan. That's terrific. So when you healed yourself, did the doctor say, well, we, a spontaneous, like they, they, they wouldn't, did they credit the diet or they just said, well, we don't know what happened. You, you know, that's you know, what they, I know. AJ, you know, I never even went back to them because wow. in my experience that, you know, they always will, they, they will come up with some, some, some analytical explanation, yeah. which I'm not interested in because sure. I'm the one who went through the two year process and yeah. saw it heal and took the herb and ate off basically one sheet of paper. So I ate leafy greens and lentils and rice and, you know, uh, no processed foods. And uh, they told me I could not heal myself, and I proved them wrong. But I don't need them to validate that. Sure. That to be true for me. Yes, absolutely. So what your kids, I imagine they go to school, at least probably the younger ones. And what's it like at school? Do they have friends that eat this way? Do they eat this way at school? I mean, because I know that sometimes well, – parents it's it's difficult navigating it's the hard. social situations for their children well, even for themselves. yeah it is it, it is hard navigating the social situations except in my case I'm a homeschooling mom so um and <laughs> I, I have to say that the diet is is one of the one of the foundational you know core elements of you know of that of, of why I do that so um, it it isn't easy, you know. It's extremely challenges. The challenging the food that exists in the school system is, you know, it has a it has a, you know light years to go. Um, and my hope is is that you know as we continue to share this message, that you know more and more people will start to, you know, bring plant based eating into the schools. And the beautiful thing is that Muse, um, which is James Cameron and Su- well, Susie sure. Cameron School you know, just announced that they are the first plant-based school in the country, which is super exciting. That's amazing. You know, I don't have kids, but just what they serve in schools, it would make me want to homeschool just to avoid that. (laughs) And and it's not even Mm -hmm. just that it's not plant-based. It's not even Mm -hmm. food, you know? Exactly. It's not even food. And, and, you know, you can think in your mind, oh, well, you know, it's just at school. But if you add up all those days and all those lunches, that's a big part of their lives. Yeah, so yeah. It, it does make a big impact. So I, I encourage moms to pack lunches always and to, you know, really, again, educate the kids, you know, let the kids know what's going on planetarily. I mean, they need to know and they yep. need to have a part in it and know that they're making, you know, responsible choices. Do your kids feel different at times or are they, are they proud of their choices or what's it like when they go to other people's birthday parties? How do they navigate that, for example? Well, I can take that one. I mean, okay. if I could jump in on that one. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, it's funny. Um, Julie always tells this story, but when Julie was developing her untuna recipe and fed it to the girls for the first time, they didn't know what tuna fish tasted like. So they had no point of comparison for that. So <laughs> so they actually, you know, when the, when the girls go to somebody else's house and they're serving, you know, there's a turkey on the table. I mean, that's a foreign object to them. They're like, I can't believe they're doing that because they don't understand it because it's not in their field of experience. But that doesn't mean that, you know, they're not going to want the cake or the pizza or whatever's being served at the birthday party. And like Julie <laughs> said, you know, our approach to parenting and navigating this is is to um, instill in them a sense of self and a sense of sovereignty. And our goal is the long term, right? Yeah. Our, what's, what's not that important is whether or not they eat the cake at that party. What is important is that um, we're fertilizing seeds that will blossom for the rest of their life and mm-hmm. hopefully instill in them long-term sustainable you know, dietary eating habits. So if they want to have the cake or the pizza, um, we're not going to have judgment on that. But like Julie said, we'll have a discussion about that. And, and, you know, we'll talk, we'll talk about it at length, the whys and what, how do you feel? And this is where that food came from. And hopefully next time, you know, they'll make a different choice, but maybe they won't. And we just kind of navigate it that way. And we try to create an emotional, um, attachment, uh, we try to instill an emotional attachment in the children um, to the foods that they're eating and where they, where they come from. We involve them in the process. We take them shopping for the food. They are involved in making the recipes and preparing the food and setting the table. And all of these things engender in them a sense of ownership 
uh, over this process of food preparation and, and eating. And the more educated and involved they are, the more likely they are to uh, want to make the choice of making the food that they know how to make. And I imagine you guys eat as a family as often as you can, unlike some families that just they never seem to sit down together because there's pi- I have pictures here to prove it. <laughs> we do. Well, yeah, we actually do. It's again, you know, I sometimes hear I hear this, uh, you know, said out in, you know, in the world. Well, you know, we don't have time. You know, we don't have time to sit down and we don't have time to cook. And, you know, I, I just have a strong opinion about it. I just feel like, well, you should make time. Because yeah. it's your life and it's your health and it's your family and these are pr- these are precious moments. You know, it goes so quick. It goes by so quickly. Yep. So that's not to say that you know we're extremely busy. Everybody in our house is an artist. We have a million projects going on and things going and coming. You know, so it's moving very fast. But we always find time. I can't say it's every single night, but we find many many meals during the week that we sit down together and. You know, part of that is everybody kind of has their thing that they're doing. My older sons now have become, you know, sh- sort of chefs in their own right. And if I'm exhausted, I can go, hey, you guys, you know, you got to cook tonight. And they'll actually cook out of this book. And, you know, they'll prepare our, it's like our family food that we've shared in this book. That's great. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> When you when so it sounds like when Rich talks about him being on the window diet, you know, going through fast food windows, was he the was he the only one on that diet, or was that still yes okay so yeah. So, yeah so you weren't taking the kids to McDonald's it was just no so they no. never really I mean even before you were plant based it sounds like Julie you kind of already were giving them pretty healthy foods to begin with pretty healthy I mean I I could say I still remember like in the old days where we go oh we'll go to McDonald's but we just get the French fries and it's like <laughs> if I ate a French fry today I would probably uh, die fall mm, down on the ground but mm. you know you can just you can feel the grease on your yeah. the, how bad it is so yeah, I would I won't say an absolute, but it was pretty minimal. Right. You know, pretty I wasn't yeah. because some 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 families have not eaten as well as you have raised your kids on and what I always hear from them is they they can't uh, two things especially cheese and sugar that they can't get the the kids not to eat right. those two things and they and, and and especially they can't get them to eat the vegetables any advice for parents that just can't yeah. eat fruits and vegetables Well yeah I mean I'll you know I'll take I'll take that one because um I'm extremely proud I'm first of all I'm extremely excited at the, uh, the frontier of uh, nut cheeses that are coming online in the world and what really is available. Yes. So, um, yeah, I have, you know, a few um, cheese recipes, nut cheese recipes in the cookbook and also sauces. And um, they are so tasty and so satisfying that, um, you know, and th- you don't have a stomach ache and your skin doesn't break out and, you know, you and you don't, you know, harm the planet or an animal, you know, either. So um, there that's an incredible um, tool, you know, and uh, it certainly has really been one of the key things that's allowed us to be able to make the shift as a family because the kids love it and the, and it's tasty and filling and it satisfies them. The other thing that I will speak to is, you know, the amazing power of the date. And, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of a shift over, but using them in recipes, um, all of my kids now will even eat a date as dessert after a meal. Yeah. Um, so, you know, dates are a whole food. They're extremely sweet. You know, we have a bunch of sweet fruits, which are amazing. And I'm a, uh, you know, I use honey. So I am, I'm, I'm a vegan. I'm not a vegan. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, if I want to give myself a label and, and I have a section in the cookbook where I cover all the sweeteners and why I feel the way that I feel. And, mm-hmm. you know, in particular, honey is a very, very powerful superfood. It's a sacred nectar. You know, there's a whole study of spiritual practice around the bees. And my view is I I honor the hardcore vegans that say, you know, leave them alone. And I I respect that greatly because I know their intention is pure. However, I just feel a little bit different about it. I feel like we need to bring those bees into our lives. We need to become beekeepers and support local beekeepers and find a way to protect them and, you know, sustainably and consciously harvest honey, which means leaving the lion's share for them. But when you do, in, you know, take some honey, understand the, the gift that you're ingesting and the power, the power, the healing power of it. 
So those are my favorites. Um, I, I never use processed sugar, and I don't use agave either. I think I put agave in one recipe. Just you did. Actually, you did. Yeah. And it was the one I tried, which was the black bean chili, and I just threw in a date instead because it was a blender Good recipe. Girl. Oh, that's yeah. exactly what I would have done. But, you know, I was trying to be, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I think I have, I think I have maybe one or two recipes that have some tofu in it or something like that. But mostly all of my recipes don't have agave. They don't have tofu. Um, those aren't like amazing, you know, pros, you know, foods. But if you need to use them to get you along the way, you know, I think it's okay. Yeah. Well, you had mentioned uh, the sauce and you have a whole chapter about the secret of the sauce and all these delicious <laughs> sauce recipes. And I think that is really key to make this uh, this way of eating sustainable because with different sauces, you can almost eat the same thing every night. I mean, not that you have to, but you have this one bowl idea. I love the idea of eating with one bowl. You pick a grain, you pick a bean, you pick a green, but change the sauce and, and the possibilities are endless of what you can be eating. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm extremely uh, proud of my sauces. Um, I think everybody will find them just very, very tasty and very easy to make. And I even have a, I have a raw mole and, you know, traditional mole should take four days to make and mine takes about 10 minutes. Are you, um, are you guys in the same room right now? Cause I want to do a little newlywed game here. I have a trivia question, but if you guys, can <laughs> each other, are you guys in the same room? Uh-huh. You're not no, in we're the in same different room. room. Okay, perfect. Because I just had the privilege of speaking at a conference with Rich in Texas, and he was on the uh, all-star panel that I moderated. And I'm going to see, Julie, if you come up with the same answer. Because as wonderful as a chef you are, Rich said, I could eat this every night. What do you think he said? Don't run in the other room and tell me the answer. (laughs) Because when he said this, I was like, yeah, dude, because this is one of my favorite things, too. And it's Essie's favorite thing, and it's Colin's favorite thing. What do you think he said? I think he said guacamole. Nope. No, that no. would that would not be Essie's favorite. I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah, not Dr. Russell. Oh, well, sorry. If I just had, if I lived alone without you, Dave, and no one was cooking for me, and I had to come home and make something for myself every night, what would I make? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. What would you make? You make. Let's see. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of stumped. You stumped wow. me. Okay, no. rice and beans. All right. Rice, rice and beans. Yeah, just right. I said yeah, I would be happy like... just with a huge bowl of rice and beans and hot sauce. Okay, but like see, I would be like would... left to my own devices. Like I would just be content with that. But luckily, I have you to make all these oh. delicious things every well, night. See, but, but I, no. was, I was thinking it was one of my recipes. Oh. So I, was, oh. I thought it was a recipe in the book. So oh, okay. I don't have a rice and beans is not fancy enough for me to no, have. No, no. So. That, that's what he meant. <laughs> but, he was saying if I didn't have Julie, that I would just do that every night, you know. So yeah. there you go. I mean, I I would too probably. I, I, I love oh, rice but, and beans. But with all the sauces you have, you could really make it special. You've got two salsas. You've got all of these yes. kinds of different sauces you can put on your rice and beans to make it yeah. even as tasty. So I noticed you're both going to be at Summerfest this year. That's pretty cool. You'll be your first time. It will That's be right. my first time. I told Julie to get ready. She's got to get ready like she's going to camp and sleeping in a dorm. So yeah. getting... are, you br- are you bringing the kids? I don't uh, think so. We haven't talked about so. it. Okay. Yeah. So they they do allow kids there, and they have their their own program and stuff. It'd be cool to hear from your kids, you know. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll have to we'll look have into to, it and see. We'll think about that. It would be very very cool. So so rich, do people really? I mean, I, when people meet you or they hear your story, is the first thing they say is like, "Where do you get your protein?" I mean, is that really as cliche as it sounds? Do you get that a lot? I mean, I do get it a lot. I mean, I wouldn't say, yeah. you know, it's not the, it's not always the first thing out of somebody's mouth, but certainly they want to know, you know, it, sure. it, that's the question that comes up. You're an athlete. How do you do this on plants? And, and, you know, it's easy to, we talked about this at, uh, at, at health us a little bit. Like it's easy to start, start getting kind of annoyed when that keeps coming up. Mm-hmm. Like, really, I got to answer this question again. And, <laughs> and, 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 and it, but I think it's important to be present with each person that approaches you with that, because if they're asking you that, that's your window of opportunity to have a discussion with them. They're asking you a question. They're seeking information and how you handle that question and how you kind of navigate through that conversation could have a huge impact on, you know, what that person thinks about for the rest of the day when it comes to food. So 
I always try to, you know, really take all those opportunities seriously and not, and, you know, and not get annoyed and not sort of roll my eyes and, you know, go, how come you don't know? And, and, you know, all that kind of (laughs) stuff. And it always goes back to, you know, the mantra, which is meeting people where they're at. You got to meet people where they are. Well, your name is Rich Roll, so if you wanted to roll your eyes, it would yeah. probably, you know, be okay. Yeah. Do you think any athletes have actually changed their diet because of you? I mean, like, you know, personally? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I get emails every single day from people just ran my first marathon, trained for my first Ironman. I've been plant-based for six months, so I never would have thought that this would, you know, I can't believe how great I feel. Like, those emails are getting more and more frequent, and that's that's an amazing thing. You know, it's the ripple effect of, you know, now it's their turn to go out and share their message and inspire the people around them and impact their community. And, you know, and, and, you know, he tells two friends and he tells two friends, you know, it's kind of like that. It's great <laughs> to see so it much. kind of unfold like right. that. Cause I, I really think this is, this is, this is such a great way to do that is through, through the athletes and through the men. When I was just on the holistic holiday at sea cruise that you guys were on last year. And what mm-hmm. was really interesting is I decided to spend this year talking to people that weren't just vegan. You know, I mean, I love our people, but I wanted to talk to other people on the cruise and kind of find out more about them and what made them tick. And I had talked to the, there was this gorgeous couple on the ship and we like, my friends and I played this game, like guess what country they're from. And we, so we just went up to talk to people and I said, Brazil. And my friend said, France. Well, it turned out that this guy was an Olympic gold medal winner, number three in the world of the triple jump from Portugal and not vegan. And we just embraced him. I got Robert Cheek on him and we just kind of like in a friendly way, you know, like, wouldn't it be cool to have like an Olympic gold medal winner, you know, you know, be doing this. And we just tried to talk to him about like how great he is, but that he be even greater and you know i think i'm going to send him your book because this is the this is the coolest thing he was so interested that this was even a possibility that somebody could Mm -hmm. perform this well on plants you know yeah it's an amazing thing and you know it's it you know you really have to break this paradigm that's so um hardwired into our consciousness you know we've all been told since we were little kids that if you want strong muscles like you got to eat you know you got to eat a lot of animal products you want strong bones you got to drink milk and it's the idea of you know tackling and dismantling those those you know for lack of better you know word truths that we were all kind of raised with is a very difficult thing and especially if you're an athlete competing at a high level the stakes are very high you know to ask somebody to change their diet um you know to do this thing that's kind of seemingly risky uh you know, that's a very courageous thing to do because there's a lot to lose. So any athlete um, that starts playing around with it, you know, I, I applaud. Yeah. Or any, any person even, even if they're not an athlete. Any per- of course. Of course. So I'm looking at these pictures and there's this guy in a baseball hat. It's not one of your kids. So who's this guy that's showing up in a lot of these pictures? Uh. W- Hmm. In the he's back, got a lot are of you pictures looking? or just yeah, in the back? He's got in the back. He's got a baseball hat with an S on it. He's smiling. He's next to Bodie, but he's in a few of these pictures. He's not one of your kids, and he's not you. So who 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 snuck <laughs> him? Where is he? That's uh, I think that's right. I think that's a picture of Greg, right? Oh, that's Greg. Sure. Yeah. So who's yeah, Greg? Yeah, yeah. Three thirty two. Greg's our yeah. Greg's our business partner. Okay, I was gonna say because I'm like, who is this guy, and why is he sneaking uh-huh. in? All- Okay. Yeah, actually, Greg is our business partner, and he um, he is a huge uh, plant-based advocate. He's been vegan for I think 35 years, and mm-hmm. um, he showed up in our lives and has blessed us a million times over. And this book would not be what it was were it not for him and his amazing heart. So, um, you know, the, on our gratitude page, you can see our first shoot for the cookbook, and he basically showed up with an entourage of people and resources and we all got busy and it was just, it just an incredible moment. So um, we're all blessed for having Greg <laughs> in I our lives. Yeah. Just wanted to figure out who he was. The, whoever did these photos is an amazing photographer. I will say to just be beautiful pictures and um, candid shots. What I love, you know, I love shots that aren't just so posed and that just a lot of, it just captures what I'm guessing it must be like well, at your house. Um, we gotta, you many know. of the lifestyle photos were shot by a young uh, music photographer named McClay Harriet, and he's from Australia, and we actually met him because we were featured 
on an online Australian magazine called the Barani Effect oh. as a conscious family, and they sent him to photograph us, and he's, all, he's in his 20s and just the most lovely guy. And my kids fell in love with him, and we fell in love with him, so we asked him if he would shoot our book. And, right. um, you know, he really just came into our lives and documented it. And, uh, and I'm glad that you like them, and I'm glad that, you know, the – the uh, his eye is reflected through the book because he's really amazing. They're fun to look at. It's almost like a coffee table book. We got a picture. Rich is swimming. You're eating. One kid is climbing a pole. One kid's playing the guitar. I mean, it's just it's very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. So, what's the what piece of advice would you give parents? What would be the first thing you you would tell parents if they are trying to get their kids to? eat healthier specifically it seems like getting them to eat vegetables is the hardest we can make a fruit smoothie most kids will drink that but there's something about vegetables why don't kids seem to like vegetables at least at first yeah julie why don't you take that one well i mean i would say i would just say uh you know make the kitchen a focal point of your life and you know it starts with taking them to the farmer's market and make it a you know make it a bi-weekly event or at least a weekly event and um, just start making it part of your life, you know, instead of project it at them, like, don't use the verbal, like you should eat more vegetables because that's not going to work. It's about getting into the whole process and making it a part of your life and watching movies, you know, that, that basically, um, you know, inform on the, the state of the planet, like Cowspiracy, you know, like Forks Over Knives, you know, like, uh, get involved in what's going on planetarily because kids are very conscious and they're very, they care very much about our planet and the animals. And so I think it's, a, it starts with education and, you know, less lip service and more, um, more being an, a living example. So you can't tell your kids to eat more vegetables while you're drinking your latte and yeah. have a glass of wine. I was going to say, you guys set a very good example of this lifestyle So for your kids. So you are, you're, you're walking the talk. You're not just telling them to yeah. do something that you're not doing. Yeah, yeah that's well, a huge part of it. You have to, you have to do that. Kids are incredibly intuitive. And, you know, even if you're sneaking in, you know, into the kitchen at midnight to hit the hog and dog, like, <laughs> and you, if you think your kids don't know that you're doing that, like you're fooling yourself. Like they're very aware of what's going on in the house. So I think it really is incumbent upon the parents to really set the example, set the tone. And, you know, I think it's also important for everybody to, to release themselves from the pressure of perfection and, yeah. and understand that this is a process and it's not linear. And sometimes it's two steps backward for every one step forward and to not let, um, you know, missteps get you discouraged and to just always be focused on what's happening now and how you can make, the best choice in the moment and the best next choice. And and I think your environment is key because I'm, I'm guessing that if I were to just come to your house right now, I wouldn't be finding a lot of crap in there. Like meaning, you know, I probably wouldn't find a lot of processed food. I probably wouldn't find, you know, I, I bet your no. home supports this. So, <clears throat> so I well, think so that brings up a, yeah, it's a really interesting point, which is behavioral change versus environmental change. Like it's, it's a lot easier to get somebody to change their behavior when you place them in an environment that's conducive to that healthier behavior pattern, um, rather than asking somebody to, um, you know, just put the blinders on when they're driving down the street because every other restaurant is a McDonald's. If you transport that person to Venice, California, where there's suddenly all these amazing healthy places to eat, it makes it, it makes it easier for them to make the better choice, right? So to the extent that you can control your environment, and we can't control all aspects of our environment, but we can control what we put in our cupboards at our house, the more healthy choices you have available, um, then, you know, your children are, are going to be more likely to start to adopt healthier habits. I think it's great because you and Julie are both on the same page, but a lot of my clients, it's only one person. Usually it's the mother, mm -hmm. sometimes the father. And I, and it seems like a, I don't have kids. So I, I'm not saying this to be judgmental. I just don't know how they do it. Like when they, uh, when they're not on board, I mean, it seems like it would be exceedingly much more difficult. It's sort of like, well, you are an alcoholic, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure you don't keep alcohol in your house even now. <laughs> no. I'm guessing. Yeah. No. no. 
And I'm pretty sure that even if Julie drinks or did drink, she wasn't keeping it in the house when you were in early stages of your recovery. And I think it's sort of the no. same with food, especially the junk food. And it's just so hard when it's often the mother who's on this program, and then they still have to prepare all the unhealthy stuff for the family. And then, of course, it brings up cravings for them. And I don't have an answer for them. I don't, I don't, do you have an answer? What do you do in these mixed situations? Yeah. That's tricky. I mean, you know, I mean, tricky. Julie, go ahead. No, I mean, I would say, you know, that, you know, start start getting some green ju- green drinks and green juices into into the system at, at a very least, at a very minimum. So, you know, again, like I guess if you just, you know, if you're just in a in a carnivore crazy household and you know, no no one has any interest. I I, I did though I do have, this is where I think the unconditional love and compassion comes in as really your greatest strength. And, you know, I had this situation with Rich, you know, for many, many years, I was wanting him to make the shift. It wasn't a dietary thing. It was a shift into, you know, some spiritual transformation that I knew was waiting for him. And he was very, very covered up in a lot of toxic, you know, chemicals from the food that he was eating. And he was, you know, put on a lot of weight and I started to like lose sight of him. I couldn't really find him. And, you know, I begged him and I pleaded and I jumped up and down and I, you know, did a lot of things to try to get him to change his ways. And it didn't, it really didn't work. And it was when I really just decided to love him unconditionally for who he is and allow him his own process. And I released him to his process. And that is what catalyzed his real lasting change. Wow. So again, I think we're all only, we're only stewards of our own self, you know? And, you know, so I didn't start eating fast food because I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to go down that road. You know what I mean? It's so I was still eating healthy and still doing, you know, still doing my practice, but I released him and I just had faith that, you know, if I was, uh, you know, a, a part of God, so was he. And so I trusted in a, in a greater power to uh, lead us wherever our lives were going to lead us. And it was at that point that he had the transformation. It, it wasn't when I was begging him to. It was when I stopped begging him to. Wow, interesting. Well, it, we could say hallelujah, or as you say in your book, <laughs> hallelujah. You, you spell hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, yeah, that is definitely well. You know, you're you're a, you're you're a yoga instructor, right, Julie? So you practice a lot of those principles anyway. That's what I need to do is have this love and compassion stuff more as my go-to instead of uh, yeah. Something, you know. Uh, yeah. I admire you people that can do it. I just uh, so AJ. <laughs> Yeah. AJ, just yeah. keep doing things the way you're doing them. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're, you're great. Thank you. You're really great. You have lo- wonderful energy, and everything that you do is amazing. And when my kids do eat out fast food at Sharky's, they, yes. they're ordering your burrito. Yes, the AJ burrito. If you live in Los Angeles or are willing to travel, go to Sharky's, www.sharkys.com. Ask for the AJ burrito. It's oil-free. If, if you can't have gluten, ask for the plate or the bowl. And if the order comes wrong, you email me and I'll I'll hook you up because, yeah, that was great. That was just something I wanted to do because there was no place I could eat, you know? Well, yeah, I can well, tell you that, that we, we, you know, there's probably – I don't know, between all, however many, how many people live in our house now, babe? I mean, there's nine, I think AJ burritos that are getting purchased on a weekly basis. That's, that's, I hope you get the the little card Mm. because every time you spend a hundred dollars, you get, you get one free. So I hope you have one of those little cards that they give you. Yeah, well, we I have hope, it. I hope I hope they're I hope they're paying you for all these well, AJ burritos. Well, so far they're they not. Should be. Did you know that they catered last year's Healthy Taste of LA? Five hundred AJ burritos, and Dr. John McDougall loved it. So I was very pleased oh, yeah. that we got something. So Rich, you like pie? I thought that was neat that on your birthday you want an apple pie, not a cake. That you're a pie lover. That that was always done. I found that very endearing because my husband's the same way. He doesn't really not that interested in chocolate cake. He's a pie guy as well. So that's a pretty cool piece of trivia that Rich Roll likes pie. If I ever have you guys over here, I'm going to make you my cherry pie. But I like people that like pie. I don't know. It's just, uh, I love pie. <laughs> Something very, uh, very, very cool about that. Are there any things that surprised you about your kids when they made the change, like that just you just didn't expect other than the, them cooking their own char, just like, 
that was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just just that. I mean, the the fact that the things that they say at the beginning, like, well, I don't like that, or I can't eat that. And then, you know, it's it's not necessarily that fast, but I would say, like, in another four or five months' time, suddenly they're eating that thing that they said they didn't like. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's been an interesting thing. Well, people change. I mean, even adults, I mean, you know, if we're exposed to something, you know, I mean, there's other parts of the world where people eat crickets and they think it's a delicacy. We don't, but they grew up eating those. So, you know, anytime we're exposed to something, it sometimes it just takes a while. You have to try it a few times before you like it. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, again, I just, I think I can just see the power of the microbial change in the cravings because it's so out of character, you know? So, um, yeah, I, and I also love that, you know, our kids are excited to go to the farmer's market and they love, you know, having fresh food in the house and, um, you know, they're planetarily conscious, you know? Um, so again, I think the, the education and living the lifestyle, it, it's a, it's a beautiful life. We're a very close family. We, um, we have a lot of fun together and we're, enjoying the life that we were given um and every single one of us is expressing themselves creatively and you know we all know that we have everyone else's support in whatever we're doing and that's you know what more can you ask for in a family than that that's it Mm -hmm. do do your kids uh have friends that eat this way and friends that don't eat this way and how is that working especially for the younger ones because i imagine the 18 and 21 year 18 and 20 year old it, it's not even that, that big of a deal because you know this i'm sure they don't get the same kind of social pressure as maybe the younger kids might but i'm not sure if they even get that at all no there's not in in oh, our no. scenario there's not really social pressure okay so much um, well, that, i guess if I, you're home in school there's not a lot of social pressure <laughs> That's right. There's not a lot of social pressure. Well, and the other thing is, you know, uh, when we, like, let's say we have dinners out or we have people over, you know, they come and eat our food. I mean, we, we had a group of amazing people up a couple weekends ago and they're not all plant-based and they all loved our food. So, um, you know, we entertain a lot. We invite people into our space. And when we go to other people's homes, we bring a lot, you know, we'll show up with three things because we, we pretty much know that we're not going to be eating what they have. Mm-hmm. So I think a really good, you know, a really good uh, strategy is to just, you know, be the one that brings the amazing food. Yeah. It's an opportunity. I agree. I agree completely. Because then you're also assured you'll have something you can eat. And it also it gets people to try this kind of food that maybe won't. Or mm-hmm. Yeah, it was actually really, I'd like to share a quick story if I could. I sure. recently was, in, I was invited to go to Vail. I have, a, my mom's from Chile and I have a whole family of first cousins who live in, in Chile. And my, uh, my first cousin has a son who races on the Olympic downhill um, ski team. And he was racing in the World Cup. So they graciously invited us out to, um, to come and see the race and ski. And so I went with two of my kids, my 20-year-old and my 11-year-old, and we basically landed in the home of, you know, seven hardcore meat eaters. (laughs) (laughs) Now, she follows us on Instagram, and she's, you know, quite a mover, shaker, changer, and she started to bring green drinks into into her life, and also they have some family disease stuff that's going on diabetes and a stroke and you know it's showing up and she's understanding that their choices have not served them um but i went ahead and and uh i made food and the the first night i i have to admit the look on her son's face was kind of one of annoyance and skepticism (laughs) but i made um you know roasted potatoes with uh cashew warm cashew cheese sauce i made my amazing vegan caesar which is in the book which is incredible um and then i braised some broccoli and you know just sort of glazed them with balsamic vinegar and uh and toasted some almonds on top of it and they devoured the food. Literally, there wasn't a drop left. And then I cooked for them two nights after that, and they were absolutely delighted. And I know, you know, what they were teasing me the first night, like, where's the beef, Julie? Where's the meat, you know? Mm. Um, but by the third night, um, you know, one of their sons just, you know, kept raving about my food. And I know I made an impact. And I know they went back to Chile, and they changed some things about what they're doing. It's a long way to go, but... 
Um, I always say, to you know, Julie, yeah. to people that people will eat this food if it tastes good, even if it's healthy. That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's sort of like, you know, uh, you know, it's the way that Elon Musk has reimagined the car. You know, mm-hmm. he's made a car that's not only more sustainable than any other car on the planet, it's faster and better looking. It's like you can check every box and that's how you well, make progress. You just and described so, you just describe yourself, Rich, faster and better looking than most people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was actually referring to Julie's recipes, which know. are, you know, the way that you the way that, you know, the way that you get people to step into this is through, you know, sort of attraction rather than promotion, right? So yeah. you just create recipes that are so good this, that yeah. they are drawing people into it rather oh. than trying to browbeat them and say, yeah, I know it doesn't taste great, but it's so much better for you. No, I, I, <laughs> right. I, 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 and I completely agree with you. I was just, I was just trying to make, a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about how our listeners can get in touch with you. Maybe some of your websites, what other projects you guys have in the works. We know you'll be at vegetarian Summerfest, July 8th through 12th. So that's a great place for people to meet you. It's a wonderful event. Mm-hmm. If you've never been uh, so many speakers and it's just a lot of inspiring things that will happen there. They're going to, that's actually where they showed the film Cowspiracy last year. So that was one of the first that's right. that showed it, which is a great that's film. Right. If you haven't, and I know you had something to do with that film, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I'm involved as a producer after the fact on that movie, and it's been helping them get the word out. And That's there's fantastic. some exciting stuff happening with that movie right now, so we're 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 really proud to be associated with it and involved. Um, but the best way to kind of find out what's going on with us, my website is richroll.com, R-O-L-L, and. If you go to the Plant Power Way pre-order page, you'll find all the gifts and bonuses and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, you can also listen to my podcast there. Uh, and I'm pretty easy to find on the Internet. I'm just at Rich Roll on Instagram and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. And Julie is at Srimati.com, S-R-I-M-A-T-I.com, where you can read her musings and read her her food blog and listen to her music and uh so it's a nice kind of yin and yang of the different things that we're doing um as far as appearances yes we're going to be at Summerfest. i'm also speaking at the longevity now conference in la which i don't have the date offhand i think it's sometime in at, at the end of april uh, I was speaking in Sun Valley at the Sun Valley Wellness Festival, and there's you, know, you can check out like appearances on on my website. There's a whole section on appearances. Great, yeah, because I I love your talk. It's 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 terrific. I I mean I heard it many years ago at Veg Stores, but you it wasn't you weren't right. doing it as a PowerPoint then, but now you do, and those those the slides really add something to it. I think the, the you know yeah, for the senior you. picture, it didn't even look like you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. I look at it and I still see me. I look at it and I think I don't think I look that different, but I guess I look a little bit. No, different. you. I mean, I, mean, I, I you know. <laughs> I didn't. I, I mean, I was I, never. Yeah. It was never like I was. I, I was so overweight that that you know I was going to get yelled at by Jillian Michaels on a television show or anything mm-hmm. like that. I just kind of had some heaviness, you know, as mm-hmm. Julie likes to call it, some denseness. <laughs> There was a lot of denseness. It was yeah. definitely the peak of denseness. Well, hey, you know, that, that window dial will do it. As, as my good friend Dr. Hans Deal says, you know, the more you visit the Golden Arches, the sooner you'll reach the Pearly Gates. So, yeah, 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 for Thank sure. You. Well, again, yeah, guys, this, this hour has gone so fast. I hope everyone will get your book, The Plant Powered Way, whether they Thank have you. kids or not, just because it's a beautiful book and the recipes are fantastic, but especially if they have kids. And just this quote by Sanjay Gupta about the book. This is not your typical recipe book. It is a book about hope and the universally shared belief that any one of us can be better. You will not find better guides in that quest. That That's mm-hmm. just, that's just it's quite an endorsement. It's quite an endorsement. So beautiful. So, beautiful I, I, man. I, you know. I, just, I wish you very much success in everything you do, but especially with this book, because I think it is so beautiful. And if, if nothing else, just to look at the pictures. I love these pictures. I can't tell you. I feel like I'm at your house already. You know? uh-huh. Thank you. Hopefully I will Thank get you, that invitation AJ. sooner. You will, AJ. And I will bring Rich a, a cherry pie for even if it's not his birthday. So thank you, you do that. so much for talking to me. My guests tonight were Rich Roll and Julie Piat, the authors of The Plant Power 
way. If you want to find out more about Rich and Julie's work, go to www.richroll.com. He's got a terrific podcast. I actually was interviewed once. We talked a little bit about mm-hmm. sugar addiction. And those of you who are listening live, thank you so much for listening. I'm Chef AJ. This is Healthy Living, and I make healthy taste delicious. Thanks so much, Rich and Julie. I'll see you soon. Thank you, Thanks, AJ. AJ. Thank Good you night. Thank you so much. Take care. Good night.